Welcome to Trailwise. I'm Nina Barlow. You are out in the middle of nowhere and you need your winch and your winch rope looks like this. What are you going to do? That's what we are going to do today is field fix a winch rope. Grab your gloves, come along. Now before we even engage the winch controller, uh, we're, we're going to inspect this thing from the outside in. I'm starting right up front here and the, right off the bat I see that this the winch hook is hanging loose. This is a, a Factor 55 flat splicer. This is my favorite, um, but it's, it's hanging loose. That tells me there's some slack in the winch line. This wasn't stowed very uh, tidily the last time it was used, whenever that was. Um, the next thing I'm seeing is some good scarring or bad scarring, I should say, on this fair lead right here. This is called a Haas fair lead, scarred up from probably the previous winch hook being drug against it. The inside lip here is not too bad, but again, this makes me a little bit nervous. This is something, if we're going to use this fairly, we got to be very careful about trying not to drag the rope against these scratched up spots. I'm going to want to replace this fairly. Moving in deeper, you can see clearly there's some broken winch rope in here. So we're going to want to pull this out and, and address this. We're probably not going to want to put a full load on this rope. We'll pull, it, pull the rope off the drum and see what other damage we have in there. It's a newer winch, so we're not too concerned about seals being dried out and leaking. It came from the factory with an IP68 rating, which means it's supposed to be dust impervious and submersible up to five meters for about 15 minutes. And so it should be able to be out in the elements and, and not have to worry about those gears inside getting wet or rusty or clogged up. But uh, that's something we can visually check out from the outside and see how things are looking. Let's hook up the controller, pull that rope out and see what we have next. All right, so we have disengaged the clutch on uh, on this winch, so now we can pull the rope out. Um, now it's a little cold out, and I don't know when the last time this winch was used, so sometimes we might need to power out. Yeah, that's really stiff. There are gears, and ooh, and that look at how dirty that is in there. Oh my goodness. Notice I put my floor mat on the ground down here because uh, the the more I can protect my rope from getting drugged through the dirt and the mud, the better. Um, so whenever I have a choice, I'm going to try to keep that as clean and safe as possible. We're going to pull this rope all the way out, inspecting as we go. So far, so good. Very dirty rope, which dirt is abrasion. So we're going to want to clean this rope when we get home. So this rope is about 100 feet long. So obviously we have a lot. Oh, look at what we found here. Uh, here's the here's the damage section. Now, unfortunately, this is quite a ways in on the rope. Um, we, we've got at least two of the 12 strands are broken here. So this is not a good rope to use just because of this one spot, if absolutely nothing else. But let's pull it out because now that I have this out, I'm seeing some more abrasion here. Yep, we got quite a few broken spots. I'm going to kind of pull these off to the side. Oh, wow. I don't know what happened here. To, do, to use this rope, we're going to have to splice out. This is still field fixable. So what we can do is we can cut the rope right here and re-splice the winch hook in here. But first we got to make sure the rest of the rope is still safe to use. I'm pulling this all the way out to where it's attached to the drum. Okay. The good news is the drum is in great shape. So here are the contents of my splicing kit. My Factor 55 Fast Fit. We'll show you that in a second. Uh, packing tape. That's my favorite tape for splicing. You'll see why. Uh, pliers, an extra thimble, uh, a sharpie, and then this is a little sample of rope that's fun to show students when we have new rope on this end. We've got some nice used rope in the middle. It's nice and fuzzy and soft. Still very good rope. Still serviceable. Till we start getting to this end, where we've got some tears and, and things sticking out that we don't like. And look at how much nicer that looks than this. So clearly we need to do some work here. We have determined that the rope is usable up to, till here. So this is where I'm going to cut it apart. And I usually have to do this kind of one fiber at a time. Uh, obviously a knife or a razor blade or anything sharp will work. But you'll see how tough these fibers are. They just they, they're not easy to cut. Given that, fortunately, all the damage is kind of confined to this one area, um, that actually makes the rest of this rope still very serviceable. These are expensive ropes, so of course we want to use them while we can. In this case, what we could do, let's say um, we this is this is all we have on the drum. 
I can still use the under, other end of this rope by splicing this loop together and making a winch line extension out of the remaining part of the rope, which is probably what we're going to do today. So we've cut out the bad part, but we need to taper this a little bit before we're going to splice this back in here. So this is going to take a few minutes. I'm just going to taper this down to about here, pull out some of these fibers and trim them. And this is so that when we splice it back into itself, then there's not like a sudden shoulder inside that rope that it, it comes to a nice taper. You can see the original splice on here. You can't even quite tell where the splice ends, maybe somewhere right in here. And that's what we're going for. We don't want just a, like a sharp edge because that will become an abrasion point. Okay, so you can see we've kind of uh, taper, tapered this down now. If I was doing this for more than a field repair, like as a, a long-term installation like this, I, I would probably taper this a little longer, a little tidier. But since we're just doing a field repair, this is going this is gonna be just great. <laughs> now the next thing we're gonna do to make our lives easier, and so I'm just gonna take packing tape. And the reason I use packing tape is two things. Number one, it's nice and slippery, so it's going going to slide through when we start trying to feed this back into itself. The other reason is because it doesn't stick to the fibers when we pull this off after we're, after we're done with our splicing. Um, duct tape really sticks to itself. So this is still, I'm just going to trim that a little bit more. Okay, there we go. This is going to make this super easy to work with because now, especially with our fast fit, now we have the little basket end. We squish this down. We feed that right in there. Gonna hold that end. Okay. Now let's plan. This is what the Sharpie is for. We're going to plan how much we're gonna splice this rope. Um, I like to have a good 18 inches spliced um, so you have some good solid, good solid hold in that line. And you can see this one originally it was spliced almost two feet here. So you can do like a Brummel splice, you know, different locking splices. But honestly, what I found is if you just have a good 18 inches in here, that thing is going to hold. So um, the plan is to use this temporary emergency little thimble in here. So this is going to go in. We're going to splice this in. We're going to start in here. Okay, that's what the Sharpie's for. And then that means we're going to pull this rope into about here. That puts our 18 inch mark at about here. However, this rope is going to get fatter. We're going to spread it apart. We're going to feed that rope back into itself. That means that rope's going to be fatter. In essence, it's going to be shorter. So I add about another four inches is realistically where I need to come out. Again, this mark is where I'm going in. I'm pulling that mark to here and I'm coming out realistically the second mark here. You screw the tip on here. Now to make our lives easy, we can kind of pre-scrunch this rope up, get this end of the rope ready to have the rest of that rope fed down the middle of it here. And what's interesting is this, this rope is still fairly stiff on this end from uh, you know, the protective coating is still pretty much intact in spite of what happened to it in the middle. This is hollow. Once you get into the middle of this weaving, it's really good and hollow in there. And you'll know because that needle will just slide right down. You gotta, it's like, it's like, uh, what do they call a monkey, monkey thumb cuffs or whatever that they, you have to squeeze them together. We're going to keep feeding that down in there all the way down to this part. Keep that rope nice and fat. Keep feeding it through there. Now I'm watching this loop end because I want to make sure to get that in there before I get that too tight. All right, this end is getting ready to get tight, so we're going to pop that in there. All right, that's looking good. Okay, so this end is out. See, we've come all the way out, so now we can remove the splicer. We can remove the tape. Much easier than duct tape to peel off. Masking tape is too, um, isn't slippery on the outside, so it doesn't slide as well. If anybody else has a tape they found works even better than this, 
leave it in the comments. I would love to try it. Always looking for a more effective way to do things. See how that rope end is now pulling back in there? There we go. That Look at that taper. Hey, not bad for a field fix. This isn't even meant to be a long-term use. But now we are ready to go. Okay, now we field fix this, and this is ready to use. However, remember, it was really close to the drum where the damage was, so this is really short. Um, now, everyone has heard before that uh, you the, the less wraps on the drum you have, the more power your winch has, and if you haven't heard that, we'll talk about that in another video. But um, So that, that that's a good thing. We have the most powerful part of our winch on here is once we get about a you know, two thirds of the way across this drum, then we got some really good strong pulling power. However, that's only going to leave us about eight feet of, of uh, winch rope sticking out. So what do we do? Because this is so short, we're going to want to use a winch line extension. Now, winch line extensions are something I always carry with me as part of my regular kit, because a lot of times we're winching things much further away than the amount of rope we have on the drum, even if you have the, your full rope functioning. Um, so I have one ready to go. The rope that we took off, uh, there's quite a bit on the other end that was at the damage end that still happens to have the Factor 55 spliced into this end. Now this rope is dirty and it, it really needs to be cleaned, but again this is a trail fix, this is a field fix, um, and we need some extra rope to get ourselves out of this. So we're just going to go ahead and splice this other end. So now we have Factor 55 on this end, uh, we'll do a splice on this end. And now we have enough rope to get ourselves unstuck today. Okay, so now we have our winch line that we have field fixed. Obviously, we need to wind this back on the drum a little bit before we put some tension on it. Um, how are we going to connect it? We have our extension that we made. So we took the original uh, serviceable end of the rope and we spliced it so it's got a loop so we can use this as a winch line extension. How are we going to connect these two things? Now normally, my favorite thing would be, of course, a soft shackle. This is a, a gator jaw from Bubba Rope. Um, one of the concerns that I have about connecting this like this is now we've got a little bit of rope on rope friction, um, which is why we use things like the thimbles, like the splicer, or on this winch line extension I already have. See, there's a little protective sleeve in there. It, it doesn't mean we can't use it like this. It just might be a little bit better to use something with a little bit more slippery surface. Like I can put, um, I could use my screw pin bow shackle, for example. That's going to give you a little bit more radius, not as much rope on rope friction to connect these two here today. Finger tight, back it off a hair. Okay, now we're ready to go. Hey, thanks for watching today. Remember, you can check out all of our trips and training at barlows.us. You can follow us on Instagram at barlow underscore adventures. Like and subscribe here, of course, and hit that notification bell. 
And until next time, be safe out there, be trail wise on our public lands and happy trails.